Good afternoon, guys and girls. It's theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, live at VMware Explorer. Day two of three days of CUBE coverage. We've had a great day one, we're having a great day two so far, unpacking all of the news that came out yesterday, and then some, Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante, welcoming back one of our esteemed alumni for his ninth visit on theCUBE, Saz Delivery, the CTO, Cloud Storage, and Data at VMware. Great to see you in person. Thanks for coming back. Great to be here, Dave yeah. and Lisa. Good to see you again. So awesome. some, some big news, VSAN Max. Yeah. Love the name. Announced yesterday. We guys made a, a big announcements with VSAN 8 last year. A lot of momentum going on. Talk to us about the last year and how that led to the genesis of VSAN Max. Yes. It's a little, little bit more than one year ago. So as you guys know that, um, you know, HCI is a model. A lot of people think HCI is a, kind of like a just storage kind of thing, but actually it's a, it's a model of how you operate. Excuse me, HCI, hyperconverged infrastructure. That's right, okay. okay. okay Just sure. helping the audience That's out right. who may not know. It's the concept that people want to have software-defined data center, and then how do you make computer, uh, uh, compute networking storage all together into like one easy, easy to manage pack kind of uh, package. And in that model is kind of where vSAN kind of took off where uh, computer and storage were together. It kind of made a lot of things easy for a lot of people. It just was convenient. It was also a scalar architecture. But as we went along over the last uh, you know, many years, in the last two, three years, we noticed that the workloads are growing. Petabytes and petabytes is, like, of data is growing everywhere. Data is getting distributed across the globe in multi-cloud. And there's also now the ransomware threats, cybersecurity threats, and there's governance, like who owns my data, where's my data. So all of these problems, like you know, kind of customers kept asking us, like, look, this, this model of computer and storage together is great. But we also, our databases are getting bigger. We have use cases of analytics, and we have a customer who has about 200 petabytes of Elasticsearch, and uh, they want this, this model of where, they want flexibility of being able to scale compute, storage, performance, capacity, all independent of each other. So we started off on the journey like two, three years ago, like during COVID time, we had nothing else, you know, we focused on what should we do about this. So the foundation of vSAN is like, it's all still the same. But what we did was that we changed some of the layout of the foundation, so that how we lay out these data structures on, onto the disks itself. We want to be forward looking for NVMe, QLC, TLC, what else comes in the future. And so we designed this new, new file system. By the way, log structure file system is the name of this architecture. It was invented by Mendel, uh, the founder of VMware. Just, just wanted to point that out. Really, I didn't, he invented log That's structure right. file system? That's right. What like, year was that? 1992. Hmm. Long ago, but it's yeah. used widely across the cloud. I mean, it's a very popular thing. Come on, really? Yeah. Log structure file system was, was, was invented in 1992? That's right, it was a paper from 1992 by Mendel, uh, the founder of VMware. Before he started VMware, that was the paper he had. Wow. And it's like a, it's a state. Because it's, it's used in storage everywhere. Well, recently. But, you know, it wasn't very like a thing people knew about it, but more recently what's happened is that it provides you a superior way to handle any device you want. And it gives you a large scale systems. You can able to be able to build large, large like, you know, things and be more stable as a platform. So that's what we did. And we kind of built, rebuilt the, some of the layout of that to actually do this log structure file system. And also it made us, made us become a multi-purpose uh, kind of storage system because we have many, many use cases we want, we want to address. And once you have this kind of layout, you can have scale out, you have software defined, you can talk to any device you want, you can put many Different use cases, like you know, simple use cases, like people want to put large databases, go for it. You want to use it for archiving, deep, cheap and deep, go for it. Because we are, have this uh, multi-dimensional scalability of, of performance, capacity, whatever, you can adjust your, uh, your dimensions, whatever you, you want. You want. You want cheap and deep, okay, go for that. You want high performance, large scale databases, go for that too. So that's the advantage we saw. And then we did the next thing, which is basically separate out compute and storage. Okay. So somewhat like a, if you want to scale them independently, yeah. elasticity. So that's what we're calling vSAN Max. The foundations are the similar, except that we are trying to be more flexible in how we offer customers. So I, I got to, uh, please don't hate me for doing this, but a little 101 on sort of vSAN and, and block storage and LSF. So LFS. VSAN, uh, uh, log structured file, right? Log LSF. LFS. LFS. Yes. Okay, wait, what's log LFS? Log structured then? file system. Log structured, LFS. LSF. L, the S is uh, log structured is one word. Ah, log structured is one word, okay. Fine, <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> History. So the, the roots are in block storage, right? Yep. Is that correct? That's and, right. And the way it was originally explained to me, LFS, what I was calling LSF, is that imagine you had to lay a floor down and you had only the, the same exact size floorboards. You couldn't cut them. And you had a, you had a, you're doing a kitchen. I am. You had to put the floor down in your kitchen 
but you couldn't cut, right? So what do you do? Yeah. Uh, so that, and you, so what, what ended up happening, you had all this wasted space. That's right. Log structured file system, you can update in place, right, or any place. You don't have to go back to the exact location. That, that's right. But now, explain how you get around, because this is so ancient, what I'm describing. But the problem was in the original paper, I'm sure they wrote, you got to do garbage collection. That's right. To, to, now, you've solved that problem, I'm sure. Because the right. problem would be when the, when the system was, was empty, it performed very well. But when it got full, because of all the overhead of the garbage collection, you know, it, it, this, this, the performance went to hell in a handbasket. But then you got Flash, you got NVMe, you got faster processors. I'm sure that's all been resolved yes. today, right? So log structure file system is about writing into a log. You see, every write comes in, it's in a log, it's a log format. So the performance is going to be high, no matter what the in incoming input data is. No matter if it's sequential, random, doesn't matter. It all goes into a log. That's what makes it like a high performance, stable, easy to understand file system. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's also like, yes, you're pushing off the in, inline processing to doing post-processing. Either you can do, see, garbage collection, you must do some form or the other, no matter how you build your system. Either you do inline, which affects performance, or you can do offline slowly in the background when there's a little bit of idleness, you can do that. Ultimately, it's a similar, similar idea. It's just that when do you do the work and how stable is the algorithm? That's what log structure files gives you. It's very stable. So much more efficient. Much more efficient. Okay, and then uh, I know we're going back to ancient history, but, but vSAN has evolved yes. dramatically since then. So, um, and now you're, you're, and I said when I saw the announcement, it's about time, it's separating compute from storage. Don't hate me for saying that, but you know, it's not a concept that's brand new, right? I mean, the cloud yeah. guys have yeah. done it you know, for quite some time. Snowflake actually yeah. popularized it that's with right. its architecture. So it's a, a very popular and sensible, yep. as you described, so you don't have to pay for the compute and the storage to scale together. Yeah, that's right. Now, what about file and object and some of the other popular formats? Where that's right. Fit? So vSAN already to be today supports files. Right. So with this vSAN Max with files on top of it, you can get a petabytes, multi-petabyte scale file server. That's one. And block already is there. Objects, currently we're partnering with uh, partners, but our customers want us to actually have something, kind of make it available to them. Right, they don't want to install it, they don't want to, they want a, they want a service from us, they want an object storage service. So maybe next year we'll hear something more, but right now we are investigating how to kind of do that. It's a popular thing because in the new world with the developers, right, developers don't think of storage the same way that, you know, how block storage people, uh, VMs think about it. They have two things they want, they care about, databases, that's the storage, and then object storage, that's the database, that's the, for them is storage. But, all the, but underlying all that stuff, you still need a solid foundation of this vSAN Max to actually help But you. the developer doesn't care, is what you're the saying. Doesn't right? care. They don't want to see that. They don't want to know about that. They don't they want to know about that. They want you to take care of That's that right. complexity. But it is, a, it is a thing you must solve. Oh yeah, though you have to run on something. Right, <laughs> but they see the interface is different than what the block is. Right. Talk a little bit about some of the key use cases. I could imagine like cost optimization of infrastructure, applications, that vSAN Max is going to deliver to customers. Yes. So we are noticing that people in this, in the, have a modern new new applications they're running into. They're doing analytics, a lot of analytics. In this new AI world, right? There's a lot of data, a lot of analytics. They need large databases. And they also, like Elasticsearch is an example, Elasticsearch. People are putting 200 petabytes of Elasticsearch on vSAN. And that's what they want us to, you know, they want that vSAN max disaggregation of it. And uh, besides that, they also want us to protect against ransomware problems. See, protect is the wrong word, recover. How fast can you recover from this? These are the innovations we're doing, not just to support these workloads, but also to be able to kind of go and recover because this problem is not going away. Right, oh no, we could talk about ransomware all day long. It's a household term, it's the, we've seen so much change to the cybersecurity, the landscape is changing. In fact, when you bring up ransomware, I was reminded of Raghu's keynote yesterday where he was talking about the five innovations at VMware and, and rapid ransomware recovery. I think he said, I think yes. that number was like 75% faster was one of them, which is it's, uh, critical. Yes. Actually, it's that some, sometimes you can't even recover sometimes in some cases, right? Right. We're actually able to recover predictably and fast. We convert it into these complex things into a workflow with AI assisted workflow. That's what is our ransom innovations in that. And we want to bring that all to all our storage, uh, you know, basically no matter what customers do, we want to bring that to that. And also, we, because it's a software-dependent architecture, the vSAN Max, the customers get to choose what hardware they want to use, latest hardware. Because Intel produces, like the industry is producing latest hardware. They can be on the latest hardware, they can dynamically adjust the scale for the dynamically adjusting like, workloads they have. Yeah. 
that's what we're aiming, that's what we're trying to solve is this new modern workloads which are dynamically scaling, large analytic databases, and this new AI workloads are coming in as well. They also require a lot of data processing, yeah, yeah. and you need a storage platform which actually can deliver on this. Yeah. What's the, is there, a, what's the connectivity angle? Uh, I remember reading, I saw some benchmarks a while ago where in previous versions of vSAN, you couldn't take advantage of higher speed ethernet, but, but now new versions of vSAN, yes. you can. Yes, Can you because, explain that? Yeah, so it's not so much take advantage, is that there's a limit how much performance you could have in a cluster, right? But now the performance is so high that you can put a 100 gig pipe and it's still like, you know, it'll, still, it'll, it'll saturate out the entire pipe. Okay. That's so, how we're looking so at it. So it didn't make sense previously to pay up Yes. For the, the more expensive. Right. But now it does. Also now the network can also become cheaper, the, per, you know, per, the cost per port has gone down a lot. And if people want the performance, they can always add that 100, 100 gigabytes. If they want less, they can also add a little bit less you know, networking if they wanted to. So cost, a choice. okay, cost, performance, key business outcomes that this is going to enable for a retailer, a manufacturer, a, yeah. a hospital. Cost, I think cost is important because in the scaling of computer and storage together, you're paying, there is a inefficiency there. Depending on what workloads you have, it can be inefficient. The right there is a cost, cost, cost thing. Also, vSAN Max is significantly lower cost than currently, current, uh, the current market prices for other similar kind of products in the marketplace. With higher performance, with more forward-looking architecture, and more integration with, 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 with vSphere. What do you mean by more forward-looking architecture? Ha define that. Yeah, because we are building a multi-purpose file system. You don't have to, we don't have to reinvent anymore. You don't have to reinvent the file system anymore. Okay. We are done with, I mean, the foundation is solid now. Right. We, have to, we are adding now higher level workflows. See, customers have to do a bunch of things, right, in their daily. What workflows can we do? Like service now is a good example. What do they do? They have service, they have workflows for everything. Similarly for us, right, we want to, we are providing workflows for all different kinds of use cases, including we're putting database as a service on top of this uh, vSAN Max as a storage, because people want, 30% of our, of our workloads across VMware of, uh, workloads across our across the customer base is, is is databases. So clearly, people use databases a lot. Yeah. And so we want to help them by providing a database as a service. But still, to do that, you need the foundation of this scale, large scale, scalable. You know, which has all the features, workflows to actually help you lifecycle the data, lifecycle storage all together. So who builds that database as a service? That's obviously partners. Partners or the some. customer. So actually, current customers are doing themselves. So yeah. we want to help them by we are actually announcing something. Uh, actually, we did announce something uh, this, uh, this week. It's called Data Service Manager. It is a database as a service. Okay. And we, it's, a, it's a managed service. The like customer can manage it. In the future, we can manage it also for them. Uh, and they, we are picking a few vendors to partner with. We don't want to build databases. There are enough databases in this world. There are a lot of different kind of databases, a lot of right. innovation going on there. But what we want to do is provide service. Like, you know, provide a, a database as a service within our platform. But you have a database. We have, we, actually, we have a, interestingly, we have actually a lot of Postgres. It's like old DNA left over from. We have a lot of Postgres and expertise. EMC acquisition. Oh no, I'm talking about Greenplum. Yes, but the, <laughs> that, that team uses also Postgres. Uh, yeah, we yeah, 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 Postgres. yeah. So there's a lot of Postgres expertise. And Postgres is one of the leading open source um, software out there. Well, it's, uh, it's, it, is, it is the open source alternative to Oracle. Yeah, and it's pretty I mean, solid. A lot of innovation is Postgres. I'm surprised at how much innovation has gone into Postgres. And that's just one. There are many other databases as well. There's like different types of databases. MongoDB, there's like a Databricks, all those things. We want to enable that we bring some of these databases as a service onto a platform. And to do that, we need all these storage features. And they can take advantage of this large scale uh, like vSAN Max. Yeah, exactly. So did I see in the notes right 30,000 vSAN customers? Yes. 30,000 vSAN customers. What value will vSAN Max unlock for them? And what's the upgrade journey or migration path like? So, Customers who already have bought into the HCI model, they're happy with it. It's just that there are a new set of workloads which are coming in for them. They don't want to disrupt this. It's working well for them. They want to be able to expand their business use cases. The outcomes are basically customers can get much more flexible architecture and cut costs. Cost is always a factor, cut costs, and be able to support these large databases and dynamically be able to adjust your, your scale, shrink up and down your storage architecture depending on the use cases. Because in this modern world, right, things come and go all the time, like especially, especially some of the modern workloads. Yeah. It's very dynamic stuff. That's what we are able to offer. The outcomes are flexibility, agility, cost reduction, and, and simplicity for the customer. It's all integrated into vSphere. It's, same, it's the same experience you get. You don't have to manage separately. It's a cloud experience you want to get. What if a customer is not one of those 30,000 and they want to take advantage of vSAN Max? 
what do they have to do? What's the prerequisite? Obviously, they need some physical server. Or they need some, 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 some storage. So what, there are, what's the what's the model yep. for the customer? So as you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of VMware customers. There are like I don't know lots of customers. Almost Half everybody million, has VMware. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so. For all of them, there are multiple choices. We found that some people want to do their own. They want to buy their own hardware, like from the Lenovo or, so like, you know, or EMC, Dell, and basically be able to deploy the software of that. We made, we made it super easy to deploy. Click button, you choose. You want vSAN Max, or I want HCI model. Okay, just very easy click, it's done. It'll automatically deploy it for you. Or there's some people, some customers who want a package solution from like Dell EMC or Lenovo. We're we working with all these partners to help deliver a, custom, a fully packaged solution for them. And so those are the models you can both of the models. Okay. Um, now, what about the data play, the, our, our hallway conversation that we were having? Because uh, VMware announced private AI, sort of, you know, at least one third of the content in the keynotes was was AI related. And and so, how does? Because you were talking about the developer wanting that sort of abstraction, not not needing to think about the underlying storage, just think about the data platform. So does this create new opportunities for customers to have a more consolidated or coordinated data strategy and then bring AI to that data? That's right. Firstly, we want to help with the life cycle of all data. That itself is a big, by the way, you know that that's a big problem people have, that the management of the data itself is like such a big burden. We want to simplify that. We're a cloud vendor. We must simplify this journey. That's what we're trying to do. And secondly, because we're having a database as a service, that now we will we want to be able to enable new type of databases in our, because databases ultimately are kind of like where you store all the data and how you query things, vector databases, new LLM databases, right? That's, I think, what we want to provide as a platform that people don't have to worry about this. They don't have to worry about deploying this, upgrading it. No, we'll do it for you. We'll manage it for you. Here's a service. You just run, just attach, do your database, ODBC, whatever uh, protocol you want to talk about. And then on top of that is a layering of another set of services which do higher level AI services. That's also kind of similar to the database as a service, right? Because they're all the services. And uh, we want to also enable that use case as well, like where we want to deploy the whole package. Like if you want to enterprise AI, we want to provide the entire package of like, here's a custom, like here's a, 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 a uh, you know, like a package solution AI box for you. Like private, private cloud AI box, kind of something like that. You get all the components, don't have to worry about it, just do your business. Focus on your business rather than these components and managing all these things. That's kind of our vision of where we want to go. And I'm sure that's from the customer feedback you've gotten from talking with so many customers. It's exactly what they're looking for. That's right. What's been in the 27 hours since vSAN Max was announced yesterday? What's been some of the feedback? What, what, what have you heard on the street here at the show? So the... We have customers now who... who I, I met a customer who wants to buy an exabyte of uh, vSAN Max. An exabyte? Exabyte. Because they have something what else. What industry are they in? Um, they're shipping industry. Okay. So okay. don't want to say more names, but I think uh, so. We are hearing this kind of stories. I'm hearing with people. Like, and the sessions are very well, like, very well attended. We had a C type on Sunday, customer advisory board, and we presented some of these ideas. And uh, we, we saw almost every hand go up on every question we had. Like you know, we, we want to do this. They're like, yes, I would like to have this because they're looking for simplicity. It's getting complicated all this data management. So they want us to deliver on that, on the promise that flexibility. You can scale. See, no, no other storage system is able to provide that scale, performance, compute, storage, all this independently. So every customer is different, right? So we're providing that, that, that options for them. Last question. You're in an elevator at the Palazzo, you're going up to some party, you got 30 seconds to talk to a prospective customer who's got questions about Visa Max and what's in it for me. What's your 30 second elevator pitch? It's it will help you um, cut costs, number one. It's easy to manage for you, like in terms of agility for you. Don't have to like, you know, worry about like, you know, how, how is this, how am I using my resources? And uh, thirdly, there's a lot of innovation coming soon that will help you even, even do even more interesting things for you. That's the foundation of what, what it is. I like that. Drop the mic, Sasala. Thank you so much thank for coming much. on the program. Your next time is your 10th time, so we'll, I'll try to get you a mug. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks, Dave, for having me <laughs> We here. appreciate oh, you coming and kind of dissecting what's going on with vSAN, the evolution. Thanks so much, and good luck with the continued evolution. Yeah. vSAN Max, yay. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, for our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE. You can find all of our content from yesterday, day one, today, day two, on demand at thecube.net, all the editorial on siliconangle.com. Next guest is coming shortly, so stick around. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.